We find ourselves journeying through life, taking the high road. So often, we forget and omit the side streets that often come across our path. I have spent close to 18 years in this crazy hobby and have never laid hands on a tube amplifier. Never even experienced a tube amplifier, never even tried a tube amplifier. Thanks so much to one of our viewers, Mo. He was kind enough to lend the channel the ZMF Pendant for review. Welcome to this first time experience of a new, quite an expensive tube amplifier. We have so much to talk about. Arriving at my door, this gentleman walks in. I will attempt to show you on camera. Oh my goodness. This. This is the flight case that comes with Amp Sound and ZMF's pendant. This is the first generation. The second generation I've not tried, but I believe it runs on the same principles and it's just slightly better. I did not know what to expect. Like I stated in the beginning, the very first time I've ever even laid hands on a tube amplifier. Didn't even know how they worked, to be honest with you. <laughs> Once uh, disassembling this tube amplifier, its tubes out of that massive flight case, we were presented with this. And for this, I think we need to take the jacket off take our gloves off and have a look. Let's see what we get. So, pulling up your sleeves. This is going back to the 1930s, 1940s and 1950s era in 2022. We are given this platter, which basically exposes the power supplies, the inputs, the switches, and most importantly, the tubes. So let's take a tour around this unit, starting from the front facing you. We have the volume knob on the right hand side of the unit. Then we have a single tube for the input slash pre. I will attempt to take one of these out because I want to actually talk about it a little bit before we move on. These glass tubular constructions draw the heat in, get to about 160 degrees centigrade and the heat that comes off these insanities is just absolutely ridiculous. For somebody who's used to solid state, you have to so carefully align the pins, make sure you don't break them because some of these tubes are quite rare and for somebody who is very new to this hobby, you have to be so freaking delicate making sure that each of these little tiny, tiny needles align and then once it aligns it will sit perfectly inside the housing 30 years later still can't find the holes and i can't push martha i can't find your holes they're too small where are they ah there is so once placing the pins and aligning the pins you gently push and lock the input slash pre-tube into place we have a Mollard Pre input tube here, a pair of JJ stock tubes. We have a couple of tongue sole as well. I am really not used to these massive long vintage serial numbers for tubes. This is just insane. And I'm sure every single person who is actually watching this review, who is a tube enthusiast is probably crying under their chair. I hope you can bear with me. The very first tube amplifier on the channel and not just that, I want to document my experience with it so that there will be others like myself who are very new to this to see exactly what they should be expecting. We have a rectifier tube at the back and we have the two main tubes at the front. Walking our way round to the left hand side of the unit, my right right now, your left, uh, we have two headphone jack outputs, single ended 6.3 obviously, low Z and high Z. Now the low Z is an 8 ohm load outputting 3 watts of power. The high Z is 100 ohms and outputting 2.5 watts of power. 
fantastic stuff. We have the transformers obviously here at the back and then coming to the back of the unit we have the switch for the two inputs that we have here. Fantastic which basically means you can put two DACs through this. Hollow or the benchmark behind me. And then we have a pair of RCA outputs. Basically you can use this tube amplifier as a pre and get that tubey goodness into your system. First and foremost, let's discuss some ergonomic issues with the ZMF pendant. It's laid out visually beautifully very very clean base and by the way this base can be bought in a choice of woods from ZMF themselves or just stock volume pot you can order a wood one if you fancy and getting back onto our first problem this tube amplifier was on the left hand side of the desk obviously I'm turning the volume like this and if you're not careful knuckle top of the tube first mistake second of all the headphone jacks next to this two tubes. As you can imagine, the cables, you have to be careful making sure they rotate that way so they're alongside the side of the pendant so that it doesn't swing around and come across the tubes. And one of the worst ones, climbing over the tube amplifier while it's on, those tubes go above 100 degrees to switch it off and on. And as you can imagine, if you're not careful, if you're wearing something very baggy, ergonomic nightmare. After overcoming these challenges, that wasn't a problem. Okay, we've worked out the ergonomics. We know how to make this work. We've put all the tubes correctly into place. Time to switch it on. What's the first shock you're gonna get? Tube amplifiers are noisy. There is a hum, depending on the tube you're using, but it's not a solid state silence experience. This completely goes away obviously when you're listening to songs, it's not a big deal, but coming from a solid state, the first thing I noticed was the 1940s hum, which I'm sure takes some people back and I'm sure causes others to have an epileptic fit. But okay, first challenge out of the way, first hurdles crossed. Ever since I have heard the ZMF name and the Verite name, it's been synonymous with tubes. You have to hear the Verite closed on tubes. I like it on solid state. No, that's not how you hear the ZMF Verite closed. It has to be on tubes. They scream for tubes. In fact, I stated as much, never even hearing tubes, when I spoke to Grant, when he bought the hi fi Varas, many many moons ago before the channel got its own one I said the ZMF Verite closed requires something very warm and he stated yes you need a tube amplifier for this okay we finally got to test that whole thing and not just those the Sasvaras here the Focal Stelia over there the LCD XC on this side of me here all of these headphones have gone through the tube galore for me to get an idea of how it is and to convey to you whether it's actually worth the trouble. Because tube amplifiers are trouble. They are a rabbit hole, they are a money pit, but oh, they're so good. After dealing with all the ergonomics, after dealing with all the tube issues, after dealing with getting the hang of how to deal with a tube amplifier until it becomes natural and it sits on the desk, we get the do's and the don'ts. So let's cover the, some of those. You cannot leave a tube amplifier on, walk away from your desk, leave the house and forget about it. Fire hazard, immediately. In fact, I've been advised, if you're away from the desk, no matter how long it's for, switch this thing off. Do not leave it on. So that's the first problem. I am always on my feet. I sit at the desk for an hour, and then I run out and I move and I do work and I go to work. It's an experience that I was very new to. Being bound to the desk and making sure that I'm ready for the tube experience. I think what I've come to realize is the best time to use a tube amplifier is when you finish the day's work, 
you grab yourself a whiskey and it's the evening, all your jobs are done. You switch it on and for those five, six hours, you're close by. Because comes the second problem. Tube amplifiers take a while to warm up and to sound their best. The pendant in this situation takes an hour. So basically you switch it on, sounds pretty meh up to 30 minutes, sounds eh from 30 minutes to about 45 minutes. Between 45 minutes and one hour, it slowly starts coming alive. And I'm talking the difference of the bass region sounding like somebody's kicking a cardboard box to, oh holy hell, what is happening, that's incredible. I'm talking from just, eh, okay vocals to the most holographic, luscious, beautiful vocals you can imagine. I'm talking from a compact stage to a stage that is vast, open and completely 3D. Tube amplifier is the vinyl of the world. It's the hard media of the world. It's basically an experience. It's not plugging into the ore. It's not plugging into the benchmark and you're done. No, it's a show. It's an experience. Now I've given you a rough idea of how I started this whole journey. Why don't we talk about the sound? I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what my brain was telling me a tube amplifier sound was. I knew it was going to be luscious. I knew it was going to be warm. I did not expect it to be this. And the problem with the sound of a tube amplifier is that the tubes make so much difference, the amplifier makes so much difference, it's very difficult to generalize. So the only experience I can give you is of the pendant itself, the tubes we have been using, the JJ stock tubes, the tongue sole tubes, and that tube at the front for the input and the pre. I'm telling you, the experience I was expecting was sitting on the sofa, having a chat, and having a nice conversation. What I did not expect was for her to walk through the door, look at me in the most seductive way only a beautiful girl can. Smile, take off her top, and drop her bra. It is the most beautiful, luscious, romantic sound I have experienced in my 18 years. It is not reference. It is not from the studio as the artist intended. It is something for the soul. And like I stated, the tubes make a big difference. Using one set of tubes, the sound was almost like a solid state amplifier, but with musicality and a creaminess that just defied expectation. But what I did get was a holographic image, absolutely engaging vocals that pop in the stage. It's as if he or she is standing there and you can walk right around them. The space is very vast and it over accentuates the stage for all headphones, not singular. It's a bit slower than a solid state, obviously. So EDM is not really expected to be listened to, though it was very, very enjoyable. But obviously you could tell it was not keeping up. But when you listen to acoustic, when you listen to love songs, when you listen to a romantic genre or gentle jazz, the verite closed showed me I am not only some of the best closed back headphones you will get on the planet, but I am an incredible headphone all around. So I'm going to convey this amplifier's capabilities through the verite closed. You get a depth of stage that can be seen into the distance. 
This is using the tubes that sound most solid state like without the warmth, just the creaminess. This was something I wasn't expecting because it sounds a lot like a solid state. And these headphones are a very high impedance headphone. They're 300 ohm. So plugging it into the 100 ohm output, I did not enjoy as much as the eight ohm input. And I don't know why. It sounded more silky, less noise, and as close to a solid state with sheer engageability. It was divine absolutely mesmerizing. It's the vocals and the emotion that comes across when you listen to Tubes. Now I understand why people who say, it's Tubes for me, man. I wanna put Sasvaras on Tubes. But what about the benchmark? It's incredible. No. What Tubes do to the vocals and the mid-range? I miss it when I'm on solid state. And I understand that now. Also, there's this engaging 3D holographic nature of instruments that literally are like a holographic table where every instrument is popping like this table right now. So you've got the pendant here, you've got Sasvaras here, yet there's this space around it. You've got the beautiful Verite closed ironwoods. You've got this space around it. And the step, obviously off camera, the table goes way to the left and right. You've got the Stellias and you've got the LCD XC back there to the sides. And it's so engaging. It's just unfortunate these tubes have to be on for an hour before you can sit down. And once you leave the desk, you have to switch it off due to heat and fire and dying and everything else. But if you have a VC and you haven't tried it on tubes, you will need to. I am a believer now. In fact, I am actually hunting for a tube amplifier to buy for the channel, but I've been advised review and listen to more tube amplifiers before making such a hefty journey into this realm. And the good thing about the pendant is you can use a variety of headphones, not just low impedance, but high impedance headphones too. And a lot of them are just high impedance uh, for headphone cans and it's a bit of a nightmare. I can't do that for a review channel, you know? I have to have something that works and this tube amplifier does across the board. I can throw Sasvaras on there and I can throw VCs on there. Now, let's jump onto Sasvaras. It doesn't have the power to drive Sasvaras. I know I told you it's 2.5 watts into 8 ohms, but we have explained this over and over again. It's not how loud something gets. It doesn't have the oomph, it doesn't have the current and it doesn't have the authority for Sasvaras but it does have the mid-range and the treble region for Sasvaras. So listening to acoustic at a gentle volume, it takes you into a concert-like experience where the singer is singing just to you. This was a wonderful introduction into the tube realm for me. And then we started the whole process of rolling tubes. And it's mind-boggling the difference different tubes make. So rolling the tubes to the warm ones, that's what the tube experience is about. It's basically a dynello on speed. There is a heat pervading the stage. It's like fire that is making the sounds. Yet on this amplifier, nothing's gooey. The definition is very vivid. You lose none of the detail. And then you get the added benefit of the holographic nature of instruments on the stage itself. Is it an experience that I want to repeat every day? No. I don't think this type of listening experience fits into my lifestyle constantly. But is it an experience that I want to come to? every few days when I'm tired and the day's work is done, the lights are dimmed low 
and the tubes are glowing. You've got a nice drink. You throw on Sasvara's, Verite, or this. Holy crap on tubes. This thing's incredible. Using the Dukoni Velour pads more than any of the other, the stage expanses. The detail you get out of this thing is absolutely insane. And that's one of the reasons why I don't think I want to get rid of this headphone. It works so well with tubes. I just never expected it. And again, we're back to that story. The Lozy. I haven't found a single headphone that I've enjoyed on the Hi-Z. It seems overly forced. A little bit discordant and obviously you get tube distortion. I mean tubes are oh, distortion galore as you know obviously, but not that harmonic distortion, a bit of a bad distortion, like unpleasant distortion. So it's been low Z for me all the way. But being able to throw headphones like this, the LCD XC, if you're interested in the review for that, check out the review up here, has been just mesmerizing. So what have I learned? Well, I've learned that tube amplifiers require a lot of attention. They require a very heavy, large wallet, especially if you get into the whole tube rolling section and realize that, oh God, this is so good, but this is better in a different way. Now let's try these tubes for the pre. Oh, that's a bit more solid statey. That's a bit less tubey. That's a bit more clean sounding. That's a bit more, never use the word analytical, but in comparison to the warm tubes, more analytical sounding. What do these other rare vintage tubes do that cost 300 quid? 500 quid. Um, so it, it's an investment, but the next tube amplifier I will try and bring in is the Cayenne Big Boy. Everybody says though, you need to try the Nublus for the Sesvaras. And that's a $10,000 tube amplifier and I don't think I'm ready to actually make that kind of investment yet. So that's been my experience for the very first time entering the realm of tubes. I hope you've learned something or I hope you found it amusing. Um, let me know what your experience has been in the comment section down below. This has been a bit of a departure from our normal reviews, but I thought doing the tube amplifier experience in this manner shows you what it's like for somebody to hear tubes for the very first time, to go through the process of learning the process of using a tube amplifier, because it's not just plug and play like a solid state is. And I hope some of the caution I have stated to you sinks in. Please don't leave tube amplifiers on no matter what, set a reminder, whatever it takes, don't leave this thing on at night and fall asleep, just in case. Let's give this tube amplifier the Convince Me Audio Tiger score. For ease of use, it's very straightforward. Once you get over the basics of actually knowing how a tube amplifier works and how to be careful with the tubes and stuff like that, so definitely gets Four tigers out of five for me. It's very straightforward, very simple, and very logical. For ergonomics, this tube amplifier gets only one tiger just because it looks so pretty as a platter like this. Because for the love of God, you do not put the output for the headphone, the volume pot of the headphone next to the row of tubes when you can just hit it with the back of your hand. And it's not just me being absolutely silly, People have told me, yes, I've burnt my hand on tubes more than once. And if you have, please let me know down below. And what was the situation that actually caused such a debacle? But for sound and for the ability to drive hard to drive and easy to drive headphones, this tube amplifier gets four tigers out of five for me instantaneously. Absolutely brilliant. And it's got a lot of power as well. So. At $2,400, for this kind of experience, build quality, backed by ZMF and amp sounds, being able to 
custom make the chassis out of a wood. Hopefully they can build me one out of iron wood like this. I don't think they can, but if they could, that would be a dream. This tube amplifier gets a solid score of three tigers out of five. The ergonomics takes it down a bit. I hope this journey we have taken with the ZMF pendant has been of some use to you. And if you are a tube amplifier veteran of some amusement, and I thank you for watching. And I thank you for all your support. Like my Patreon members who get early reviews, first impressions, first mistakes, all in the private Telegram chat before anyone else. And if you would like to join them, all the information will be down below. And a special thank you to Mo again for dropping this off for such a long time, mate. I really do appreciate it and it's been quite an experience. I can't get over how seductive it sounds on a verite. And thank you to our public Telegram chat. You guys are legends. I'm Koji CEO. I will see you in the next one. Peace.